Good morning. Welcome to Be Restored Worship Center in Lithia Springs, Georgia. Thank you for taking the time to join and fellowship with us on today. We pray that you will be blessed. We pray that you will be changed and transformed before the end of the service. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you for your many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Father, we thank you for sending your son Jesus to save us, to redeem us. Father, we thank you, Father God, that you chose to look down upon our look down upon us, God. So we just say thank you, Father God. Father, we ask you to have your way in our service on today father we ask you to move father in the name of jesus god you know the needs that are represented father by those that are watching on today father and that are in attendance so father we ask you now to move as you see fit to move in the lives of your people father we thank you because we stand in great expectations for you to perform miracle signs and wonders god we believe father in the areas where we may have doubt we ask you to help our unbelief father god in the name of jesus father we thank you for speaking a word that will speak to our situations father we thank you father god that as your word goes forth through your man serving on today pastor micah god we thank you that the word falls on good ground father we ask you to anoint him afresh on today father we ask you to move and show yourself to be strong and mighty in his life father we thank you for meeting every need that he has in his life god we thank you for giving him the desires of his heart father we thank you father god that you honor the sacrifice that he's made just to continue to serve god and to walk with you father to commune with you father we thank you father god that every prayer request that he has before you father we thank you for answering father we thank you for moving on behalf of our men of god father we thank you for Father, for Apostle Belinda and Pastor Walt. Father, we thank you for touching them in a mighty way. Father, we thank you for revealing yourself to them in ways in which they've never seen before. Father, we thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. Father, we thank you for the evidence that we were in your presence. Father, we thank you for the evidence, Father, that you touched as only you can. Father, so we thank you for touching in those areas, Father. 
Father, that we may not have even communicated out loud, but Father, only you know. So we thank you, Father, for going to that place and touching us now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Father, that you perform miracles, signs, and wonders in our lives. Father, we thank you, Father God, that everything that we stand in the need of on today, Father, we thank you for moving mightily and strong on our behalf on today. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for opening doors, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, we even thank you for the open heaven that's over our lives. Father, we thank you, Father God, in the areas where we may experience drought. Father, we ask you to send your rain. Father, rain down in every area of our lives. Father, we thank you for saturating us in those places that may have been laying dormant. Father, we say thank you, Father God, for activating and cultivating those gifts that are on the inside of us father we say thank you father god for reviving them now in the name of jesus father thank you for breathing the breath of life into us again father thank you for breathing onto our gifts and our ministry callings and our anointings father even our talents father we say thank you father god for breathing on us again father we again thank you for the rain father rain down in our lives father we say thank you for saturating us with your rain. Father, we thank you, Father God, for raining down on our lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you, Father, for what you're doing in us and through us on today. Father, we stand before you this morning as empty vessels asking you to fill us again. Father, fill us with your love. Father, fill us with your anointing. Father, fill us with your joy. Father, fill us again with everything sufficient father that we need on today father so we thank you father for every person that is joining with us on today father we thank you father for moving on our behalf father so we say thank you for doing great things for us on this week father we stand in expectation father of the testimonies that will come forth of the great and the mighty things that you have done just for us because you love us god thank you for loving us right where we are father thank you for loving us right where we stand father we say thank you father god that you love us with an unconditional love father so we say thank you father God for everything that you will do for us as we go forth on this week father God and we call it done father and we seal this prayer and it is so in Jesus name amen Again, we thank you for joining us on today. We pray that you are in a posture to receive the word of the Lord that will be delivered through our very own Pastor Micah L. Spates. Fasten your seat belts and get ready for a rainbow word. Receive Pastor Micah Spates now. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. This is um, the day the Lord has made and we rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so um, thankful to God for this day and this opportunity. And I praise and bless the Lord for you, um, his children. Amen. We um, count it a privilege and an honor to um, be here today. And we're so thankful that you chose to worship here with us at Be Restored Worship Center. Um, we're going to go straight to the word this morning. God, we pray that you would bless us, that you would touch our mouth, that you would give us clarity of thought and precision of speech. God, we pray that you would get the glory out of all that we say and do. God, we decrease that you may increase in us. God, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. God bless you. Um, if you will go with me, we're going to go to Luke this morning, Luke chapter 18, Luke after chapter 18, verse one through eight. Again, Luke chapter 18, verse one through eight. Now, Jesus was telling the disciples a parable to make the point that at all times they ought to pray and not give up and lose heart. 
saying in a certain city there was a judge who did not fear God and had no respect for man. And there was a desperate widow in that city and she kept coming to him and saying, give me justice and legal protection from my adversary. For a time he would not. But later he said to himself, even though I do not fear God nor respect man, yet because the widow continues to bother me, I will give her justice and legal protection. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will be an intolerable annoyance and she will wear me out. Then the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not our just God defend and avenge his elect, his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? He will will he delay the providing justice on their behalf? Verse eight, I tell you that he will defend and avenge them quickly. However, when the son of man comes, Will he find this kind of persistent faith on the earth? I like to use for a topic today, persistent faith, persistent faith. Um, now sometimes we uh, seek God and we pray to God and there are things that we uh, are waiting to manifest in our lives. And uh, it is important that we be persistent in our faith that um, there is a, a one train of thought that you pray one time and then you just uh, leave it alone. You don't pray about it again. You don't ask God about it again. That if you ask him continually, then that means you don't have faith. But listen, I believe that we pray consistently and persistently by faith. And it's not because we do not believe God. It's not that we don't have faith in him, but we remind ourselves of what we're waiting on. How many know that we as humans, sometimes we've got to rehearse it and keep speaking it in the atmosphere so that we are encouraged, so that we are reminded of what God has said and what he has promised to us and what is going to manifest. Listen, we know and we understand that it's already done. Listen, we believe that, right? That whatever it is that we've prayed for, that whatever God has promised us, it's already done. And all we're doing is waiting for the manifestation of what he has said to show up in the earth. So while I'm waiting on it to manifest, I'm going to keep rehearsing it. I'm going to keep praying to him. I'm going to keep having persistent faith. I'm going to make my petition known to him and I'm going to consistently and persistently just keep rehearsing it in my mind. I'm going to keep rehearsing it in my spirit. I'm going to keep going to God for that which I am waiting for it to manifest. I'm persisting and calling it out in the spirit and, and that I'm waiting for it to show up in the natural in the name of Jesus. Listen, what I'm waiting to manifest is not this new train of thought of just saying stuff and waiting on it to manifest. But we understand that it is by faith and by faith in God that we pray. It is the manifestation of the things of God that we pray. Why? Because I pray according to his will. I pray according to his desires in my life, that my desires uh, align with him. And because my desires align with him, that what I pray, I pray, I don't pray amiss, but I pray and I have faith that he will do it. I pray his will and I have confidence. Because somebody said, I just pr I pray his will and I have confidence. So when I'm praying, when I'm persistent in that which I am waiting for, it is my confidence in him. It, it does not mean that I lack confidence in what God is going to do. But every time I say it, every time I pray it, it builds up my confidence and I'm consistent in what I ask for. And every time I pray and I ask for it, my faith is built up, that I'm believing him more, that I'm trusting him more, that he will do it. My prayers and my praise are a testament to God that says, I know you have already done it. And I'm waiting on the manifestation of it in the earth. I know you've already done it. 
I know it's already done. So my posture is in my pursuing you, that my posture in praying to you is that I'm just waiting on it. So I'm going to have the right uh, position when I'm praying and when I'm waiting. My prayers are not prayers of doubt. My prayers are not, God, you're taking too long. My prayers are not, God, I don't know when you're going to do it. I'm getting frustrated. No, my prayer is, God, you will do that which I ask of you because you are God. My prayer and my praise, I'll say it again, my prayer and my praise are a testimony and a testament to God that he has already done it. I'm trusting you while I wait. I'm thanking you while I wait. I'm rehearsing it over and over what you said and I believe and I know it shall be. And sometimes what happens with us, the, the thing that messes us up is that sometimes we struggle with the delay of it manifesting. And when we struggle with the delay of it manifesting, if we're not careful, um, then our faith will begin to waver. That's why I believe that it is important that we be persistent in our faith so that in those times of waiting, that when it seems like the, the time is prolonged, we can trust God and we know and we believe that he will do it. Just like the woman in the story in verse four, it says, uh, for a time he would not, the judge would not grant her request. But later he said to himself, even though I do not fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow continues to bother me, I will give her justice and legal protection. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will be an intolerable annoyance and she will wear me out. Her, her keep coming. Listen, she was persistent with what she wanted, and she had to deal with an unjust judge, somebody who did not have reverence for God, did not fear God, and did not have any respect for men. The Bible declares that, but she kept going to him saying, listen, I need justice and legal protection. Listen, can I flip that real quick? Um, it is uh, so crazy that in this life that we as a people, listen, uh, uh, we understand and know that sometimes we have got to deal with the systems and the structures, the, the structure in this nation that oftentimes we do not have the correct justice and legal protection. Can we just be real right now? And sometimes you have got to keep going to the systems. Sometimes you have got to keep calling it out. You've got to have faith and believe that what has been unjust, that justice will be served. Listen, we serve and we live in a nation that oftentimes there are a people that live in this nation that justice is not always fair. That there are those that live on the other side of justice. But I believe that not only if we're persistent in our faith and persistent in our prayer, but we keep going to that system that exists and keep proclaiming, I need my justice and I need my legal protection. Y'all catch that later. But what the Bible says is that woman understood. Listen, you are not a judge that fears God. Listen, we're dealing with some systems and some structures that don't fear God. They don't have a reverence for God. They don't like you and they don't respect you. So when you proclaim to them, listen, I need my justice. They turn a blind eye. And that's why there are those that live in this earth that, the, the, let's be real, the black people that live in this nation, there are those that have had nonviolent crimes that are serving life sentences, but there are those because they cry some tears and they say, oh, they didn't really mean it. They get a slap on the wrist. But we as a people have got to stand up and say, give us justice and give us legal protection. 
It's just that simple. And until it comes, we've got to, as a church, listen, we can't be silent. We can't sit on the sidelines and let injustice happen in this world. But as a body of believers, we have got to stand up for righteousness. We've got to stand up for that which is true. Just like this widow woman who had persistent faith. She kept going. She kept knocking down doors. And this man had to yield and say, listen, even though I don't necessarily agree, even though I don't reverence God, even though I don't have respect for her, because of the fact that this woman is going to be an annoyance, I've got to grant a request. Listen, sometimes you've got to annoy systems. Sometimes you got to cause some drama. Sometimes you got to be persistent in your faith and what you believe that God is going to do. It does not matter what the system is. It does not matter what the structure is. Those things that have exalted itself against God and against righteousness and against his people, we as believers have got to stand up and proclaim truth and justice. We've got to do it. It's no way around it. Listen, let me, let me, let me say this. And, and, and I, here's what I believe. I believe that I can celebrate my blackness. I can celebrate my culture. And it does not take away from anybody else. But what happens is that oftentimes, uh, everybody's not going to like this. Oftentimes, that when we proclaim our blackness, when we love ourselves, when we try to lift ourselves up, then we are viewed as divisive, but everyone else can talk against us and talk about us and, and try to shut us out of systems and not give us equity and not give us justice, and it's okay. But the minute we speak up, the minute we try to lift ourselves up and lift our community up, there is a problem. Can I tell you something? As much as I am a Christian, when I live in this world, people see my blackness first. The, uh, Christianity, everything else comes secondary. And when you deal with people who have a warped mindset and don't have respect for God, they don't see the God in you. All they can see is your color. All they can see is your so social status. All they can see is that you're a widow. All they can see is that you're poor. But I believe that we as the body of Christ have got to stand up and not be silent. And if we are, the generations that are coming behind us are going to have to deal with some hardships and some issues because this generation did not confront injustice. Listen, I, if nothing else, our grandparents, our grandmothers, our grandfathers, they had persistent faith. They believed that God would deliver. They believed that God would make a way. And they held on to the altar and they prayed. They prayed. Listen, it may not happen in my lifetime, but there are those coming after me. God, bless my children. Bless my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, God, help them to not deal with what I have had to deal with. And because they were persistent and stayed in the face and the presence of God, we are where we are. And we cannot stop being persistent in our faith now. Some of us feel like we have arrived and, and, and we've gotten a little bit. We've got a little social status. We've uh, arrived and, and we can live in certain places and we can drive certain things. But if truth be told, we understand and know that everything is not equal, that everything, there's not equity in every area. And we have got to stand up and proclaim and speak truth to power and say, give me justice and legal protection. We, we've got to. We've got to. There's too much riding on us that, yes, I, I, am, I, I believe in God. I trust God. And because I believe in God, listen, those, the, those, we were a nation that was not looked at as people. 
right? Uh, we weren't valued. But listen, if there's nothing else that we should be able to recognize as a people is that God has been with us. God has never left us. He has never forsaken us. Even when we had to go through difficulty and problems and issues, God has been with us. We have been faithful to God and God has been faithful to us. We cannot afford to turn back or, or turn our backs on God and what has worked for us and his will and his principle just because we feel like we have arrived. We've got to stay persistent in our faith. And we understand when we look at justice that it's not always equal. Justice is not blind. That, I, that one person can say, I feared for my life. And then someone else is looked at as the lowest of the low. Right? There, there's no consideration that, oh, they've had a hard life or they have some, uh, some things that they're dealing with that may have caused them to do that. It, it, we, we, we know the stories. We see it time and time again. If we be real, we got to be real with this. We got to see it for real. And when we see it for real, when we deal with it, when we acknowledge it, and when we stand up, listen, we've got to go into these places and we have got to make our presence known and we've got to take the Lord with us. Listen, we are not going of our own accord, but we are going in the name of the Lord. He's going to be with us when we go in. Right. So sometimes, li listen, uh, we understand and know that even as we go through doors, that even as opportunity presents itself, sometimes we have to be three and four times better. We're always having to prove that we belong in the room, that we're having to prove and overprove that we belong at the table. But listen, since God is on your side, you don't have to prove nothing to nobody. Why? Because you go in under his power and his anointing and he is with you. All you've got to do is keep speaking to systems, start speaking truth to power and keep being persistent in your faith and your prayer to God and watch him manifest it. He's going to do it in every area. And we cannot overlook one area and then believe that God is going to do it everywhere else and not in this area. So she says, give me my justice and my legal protection. Listen, we're not asking for you to do anything special. We're not asking you to, to bend rules. All we're saying is let it be equal the same way that one person is held to a certain standard let it be that way across the board but i you you can't cry your way out of it and so what will happen and a lot of times what is used is the the issue of black on black crime can we talk about that real quick uh, uh, some of y'all, y'all may get offended by this, but it is what it is. We've got to tell the truth that a lot of times we will talk about black on black crime. Is, are there issues that need to be addressed in our community? Yes. But the thing is, if Pookie and Ray Ray uh, shoot each other or get into a fight, they will serve the maximum sentence. They're not going to be able to get out of it. That's the disparity that we see in our legal system. Um, there are things that one person, that black and brown people can do, and we are held to the highest penalty. But when other people do the same thing, they are not held to the same standard. So just like this widow woman, she said, give me what is due to me. That's all I'm asking. And we have got to be consistent and persistent. You can't love my culture and not love me. You can't love what I bring to the table and emulate me and then not love me. 
It all comes together. You can't steal my swag, but then don't love the soul of who I am. You got to receive it all. And when we get to the point where we can acknowledge this and really deal with it, then I believe that God can truly bless this nation. People often say that Sunday morning is the most segregated time of the week. But I believe, listen, that God, if we would just acknowledge it, we have a people that don't even want to acknowledge the wrong. They don't even want to acknowledge the disparity. But until we are in truth and deal with it for real, we don't leave space for God to truly bless and heal this nation. We've got to allow him to, to come in. And, and when we uh, are honest and open in certain areas, then God can bring true healing. He can, bring, he can bridge the divide. Then we will truly love one another the way that God loves us. We cannot pretend like it does not exist. But we've got to stand up. You know, we'll celebrate Black History Month on the surface, but not really deal with the weightier matters that exist. We'll look all over, uh, companies everywhere, Black History Month, Black History Month. But what are we doing ab about black present? What, what, what's being addressed for this present age, this present time and where we are going as a nation together for real and it is not absent of God and that's the thing some people want to make it like it's absent God but God is very much in the details how do you know that because when the children of Israel were in bondage and in captivity when they prayed to him what happened Moses and had to go to him said let my people go had to go to Pharaoh had to speak to that one that held them in bondage and God delivered them listen you see it time and time again where there are a people that are oppressed and in bondage, when they call on the name of the Lord, the Lord shows up for them. And he makes a way. And he makes a way of escape. And he walks with them. And he's with them in his, by his spirit. And I believe that even though, yes, we've made some progress, there, are, there is still a road to go to get to where God would really have us to go. So we can't turn our backs on God. We can't be like the people that when God would deliver them out of, a, out of, uh, out of their captivity and out of a strange land, and then when he would bring them to a place of prosperity, then they would forget about God and then get uh, caught up in other things, and then they would have to say, God, send us a judge. God, send us a deliverer. Why? Because they forgot God when they got the blessing, when they got into the land and was able to prosper. Listen, we have got to the place where most of us have forgotten God and we've taken on things that God never intended and we forgot about God and put him to the back. And so we get in this position, God deliver us, God help us. But we have got to be consistent in our faith. So the judge says, listen, I'm going to do it because she's getting on my nerves. And so what the Bible says is, if this unjust judge <laughs> will do this, just imagine what God, our father, who is faithful and just will do for you. That's in every area of our life. That when we go to God, he sees us, he hears us, and he will bring it to pass. He's going to do Luke 18 and 1. And the King James Version says this. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought to always pray and not faint. You've got to pray and don't give up. 
pray and don't lose heart. Whatever it is that you are waiting for, whatever it is that you need from the Lord, don't stop praying. Don't diminish your faith. Don't allow anything to deter your faith, but stay in the presence of God and keep pursuing after him. You've got, we've got to keep doing it. Why? Because we know it's going to manifest for us if we remain faithful. We've got to live by faith. The Bible declares that the just shall live by faith. I'm going to be persistent in my faith. Listen, our faith in people may be shaky, but our faith in God must be consistent and persistent. The enemy will put things in our path that will be an attempt to deter us, but we have got to stay persistent. We can't waver. We can't move from one side to the other. We can't let up. We have got to remain holding on to God. You may feel like giving up, like you're on the brink of giving up. God, I don't know if I can hold on any longer. Be persistent. Sometimes it may feel like you take two steps forward and three steps back. You've got to be persistent in your faith. Listen, now is the time you've got to bombard heaven with your prayers, bombard heaven with your praise, with your thanks, because you know and understand that not too long from now, he will manifest it for us. He's already done it. He's already made the way. He's already opened the door. And we are just waiting to collide, for our faith to collide with what God has already done, with what God has already spoken. And then Luke 18, verse 8 says this, When the Son of Man comes, Will he find this kind of persistent faith on the earth? Listen, my, my faith also says this. I know he's coming back. That whatever goes on, I know he's coming back. And when he comes back, the Bible says, will he find the type of faith that this widow had, that she was persistent that she pursued, that she went after that which she wanted, and she would not turn back from what she knew she was entitled to. She knew what she should have. She knew what God was going to do, and she did not let up until it happened. Listen, you have got to hold on. Don't let up regardless of what happens, but keep having faith in God that he will do it and he's coming back so I'm living this life to live again and because I'm living this life uh, to live again I'm pursuing God with all that I have and it's my desire to please him and I want my faith to show up in every area that God I believe you I trust you and I know you will bring it to pass. God, you're going to bless me in every area. And you're going to bring justice. You're going to bring protection. You're going to bring healing. You're going to bring increase. You're going to bring salvation and deliverance. God, you are the one that can do it. God, I trust you in the midst of it. I trust you with my brokenness. I trust you with my disappointment. God, I trust you in everything. And God, you are the one that will do it. I know you're able to do it. So my attitude and my faith and my posture says you will do it for me. And my faith will be persistent. So when he comes back, he'll find a people that have been persistent in their faith. 
They've been consistent in their faith and trust in God. Come what may, they were persistent in faith. And they understood, listen, he's coming back for me. So I'm going to do that which I need to do. And he's commanded me to do because, listen, I have a reward on the other side. That there's some things he's going to manifest in this life, but I understand this is not the end of it. That there's some things that I will receive after this life is over. That after this tabernacle, after this earthly temple has dissolved, we have another building not made by hands. That he's gone away to prepare a place for us. That we can be with him forever we can be with them forever so what do we have to do we have to make sure that we stand up for righteousness that we stand up for justice that we stand up for the things that are right and we can't be silent and turn a blind eye to injustice and then think that we're going to receive the full benefit that God has for us. Listen, we have been called to every area. We have been anointed for every area. God has given us his anointing to walk into every industry, every system, everything that exists in this world. God is with us. And there is no enemy or no system greater than the God in us. That we can what? Every principality, every power, every high thing that has exalted itself against God. We have the ability to bring down every stronghold. Every stronghold. Why? Because we're persistent in our faith. Because we know it's not us, but it is God. God, we thank you. We bless you that you are with us, that you never leave us nor forsake us. God, we thank you that our faith will not waver, but will be persistent in our faith. God, touch this nation. God, touch and bring uh, your will in this earth. God, the king's heart is in your hand. And you can turn it whichever way that you will. So, God, we pray today that you will bless and touch those that have been unjustly persecuted. Those that have faced disparity. Those that are living in lack because of systems that exist. God, we pray that every system every government, every uh, financial structure, that it come into alignment with you so that your people can be blessed. God, we thank you that you are able to do it. God, deliver your people. God, heal your people. God, give us the heart of you that we won't self-destruct, that we won't do the things that are destructive to ourselves, and to our community. God, we thank you that you are calling us to sit at tables. You're calling us into rooms. You're calling us into places that we will be able to speak truth to power. And God, help us to not cower. Help us to not compromise. Help us to speak the truth and to speak your word. God, we take your spirit and your anointing with us everywhere we go. God bless every leader everywhere in the body of Christ that they will stand up and, and stand up for their community and their, their neighborhoods and their city and their counties and stand up in their state that we won't be selfish but God help us to be persistent in our pursuit of you in pursuit of your justice and your protection. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Amen. God bless you. Um, we have persistent faith. When he returns, will he find this type of persistent faith? And we've got to deal with what is going on around us as a church, as a kingdom. If we really want his kingdom to come, then we've got to deal with the things that are going on so that his will can truly be done in the earth. Amen. Um, this is a, an excellent time uh, to sow into the kingdom of God. Amen. Uh, we understand and know that he always gives seed to the sower, that it is through him that he gives us the power to get wealth and that he causes that which we go to do to prosper. Um, Be Restored Worship Center is good ground. We believe that. We know that, that it is good ground. And we believe that as you sow into the kingdom of God, that you will receive a harvest, that the liberal soul will be made wealthy. So today, uh, if you have your tithes and your offering, you're looking for somewhere to sow, or you've been holding on to it and say, listen, I've got to sow this seed somewhere. You can do that today here at Be Restored Worship Center. We have uh, multiple ways that you can give here at Be Restored Worship Center. If you have the Givelify app, you can look for Be Restored Worship Center, Lithia Springs, Georgia, or you can go to PayPal at Be Restored Worship Center, again, Lithia Springs, Georgia, or you can go to our website, berestored.net, and the links to give are there, or you can download, if you have not downloaded our app, the Be Restored Worship Center mobile app, and the links to give are there as well. And I would encourage you to download our app so that you can stay informed in reference to what's going on with the ministry and connect, grow, and be with us here at Be Restored Worship Center. Amen. I pray that every seed that you sow today, that you would name your seed and put it in the ground and you will see the manifestation of the harvest of your seed. Amen. We are doing great things here at Be Restored Worship Center, and we are so thankful for your support as we continue to grow and to build uh, the kingdom of God. It's not us. It's not, we're not building our own kingdom, our own platform, but we are really endeavoring to do a work for the Lord. So we're thankful uh, for your seed, for your prayer, for your encouragement um, here at Be Restored Worship Center. Amen. Listen, uh, we will be back here on Wednesday at 730 for our Life Empowerment Wednesdays for a time of prayer and teaching on Wednesday. Listen, make your way uh, back to Facebook on Wednesday at 730 as we come together um, to just study the word of God and to to get instruction and get uh, life application uh, from the word, amen, that will help us every day. And then we will be back here uh, Sunday at 10 a.m. Um, this will be the first Sunday, so we will be doing Holy Communion on, this, on next Sunday. So uh, have your elements ready, and we'll be together virtually again first Sunday of March to partake in Holy Communion. So if you can get your elements together for next Sunday. Uh, we'll come together in a time of Holy Communion and the Word and worship on next Sunday. Listen, gather your family together and let's sup together. Amen. And just come together um, in the name of the Lord. Amen. It is my, my prayer that you really be blessed and that um, you receive this Word today. And do our, your part. Sometimes things may seem really big and insurmountable, but I really believe that if we all do our part where we are, we can make a difference in the world. We can make a difference in our community. God is calling for us to stand up and make a difference where we are. Amen. Just do what you can do. Amen. And I believe that God will do the rest. I love you so much. I love you with the love of the Lord. Have a blessed rest of your day. Have a prosperous week. And I'll see you next time here at Be Restored Worship Center. I love you. God bless you. Peace.